Running your YouTube business can feel overwhelming when it comes to making the videos and marketing the videos, then getting in your DMs, doing your social media, as well as real life things like maybe picking up what your two-year-old left for you or having to go grocery shopping or dealing with your in-laws drama. There are so many distractions when it comes to being a business owner. And in today's episode, we're bringing you one of our business mentors, Shalene Johnson, to talk with you about five ways to kill distractions man, I need this, and to get more done in less time. My name is Heather Torres, and you are listening to the Think Marketing Podcast, where we deliver a brand new episode every single Tuesday. So if you're new to the podcast, consider subscribing wherever you're consuming this content on. And today's episode is brought to you by MIABonus.com. After this episode, I'll tell you how you can score a two-hour group mastermind with myself and Sean Cannell when you enroll in the Marketing Impact Academy. The doors are open and I'll tell you more about it after this episode. Well, let's jump in with Sean Cannell and Shalene Johnson for our featured conversation. As we head into a new year, one of the biggest enemies for us as content creators and entrepreneurs is really not a lack of information. It's a lack of implementation. However, there's a massive enemy that holds us back from actually executing on what we need to do to build our brands, our YouTube channels, and our businesses. And today I'm joined by Shalene Johnson, number one New York Times bestselling author, a fitness celebrity, as well as social media and marketing expert who's built multiple businesses and built and sold multiple seven-figure businesses and has been a major mentor in my life, not just to do the right steps in business, but to get my mind right, to get my time right. And I'm excited to be joined by Shalene Johnson. Shalene, welcome. Hey, so good to be here. What's going on? Super great to see you. And one of the things you're so passionate about is this idea of killing distraction and getting focused. What are we facing today as content creators, as entrepreneurs, as people that are trying to build our businesses with social media when it comes to how important this issue is? Well, I find that a lot of people who end up becoming entrepreneurs or end up becoming content creators tend to have a difficult time thriving in a very structured nine to five work for someone else kind of environment, which is why we kind of lean towards doing our own thing. We, um, we have a lot of different interests. We're good at figuring things out. We're, we see little trends. We see details other people don't see. And frankly, most of us are very easily distracted. It's the one thing I've learned in the last 25 years of working with people who either want to start a business or want to scale a business is that we have this one thing in common. Most of us, like the number one nemesis, isn't that we don't have any good ideas. It's like there's so many ideas bouncing around in our head in so many different opportunities and so many different things that we can do that I think our our number one enemy is distraction. That's so powerful. And Think Marketing Podcast, you know, think about this, if this is you, um, are you guilty of wanting to write three different eBooks, start five different YouTube channels? You're tempted to keep your Instagram updated, your Facebook updated. Now get on Clubhouse and listen to conversations while you need to write that new email sequence. And then you also want to brainstorm for other businesses and you feel like you should also be on TikTok right now and Reels and Snapchat because there's so much opportunity and you're feeling guilty because you're not keeping your Pinterest updated. <laughs> I really feel like that's kind of the modern challenge of us, especially in the social media space. There's so much opportunity but it's like opportunity overwhelm. And Shalene, there's a book called Hook Point that revealed that over 60 billion messages are displayed on digital platforms every day now, that we are being hit by 5,000 to 10,000 marketing messages. So if it's not only our own calendar, our our attention is being pulled to social media platforms, to the Queen's Gambit, to HBO <laughs> Max, to watch the flight attendant. It, it Like there's so many different things. And therefore, we end up reaching the end of our day, maybe not having accomplished very many things that actually matter for moving our business forward. So I'm excited about these five tips, but we are living literally in probably one of the most difficult ages where distraction is a hundred X. Yeah, it, it's so true. Uh, for me personally, I, when I have, I, I've struggled with this kind of like all my life and I noticed my dad did too. So I just thought it was normal. Like this is just how our brains operate. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a brain scan and figured out that I have 
uh, a pretty severe case of attention deficit disorder uh, with some hyperactivity and inattentiveness, which didn't surprise me. It was, it was just like confirmation like, oh, well, I can't use that as an excuse, but this is more than ever a reason for me to know that I'm in charge of my focus, that this literally is something that I can be pulled in any different direction. So I've had to create coping techniques coping techniques. And I found that a lot of people, they, they're like, I think I have ADD. Should I go get tested? I'm like, you know, should you go test? I don't know. But I do know this. If you think you have it, you probably do. And even if you don't, if you're easily distracted, which most of us are, you have got to put these systems in place. We have to teach these things to our children. But if you're someone who's easily distracted, if you don't do these things, you start to beat yourself up. You start to do the whole comparing yourself to other people. You have expectations for yourself each day, which you're not going to meet because you're allowing distractions to derail your day. So I want to share with your audience five like really solid tips that have complete. That's it's what's the only reason why I've been able to have as much success of, as I have with the kind of brain that I have is by learning to manage my brain, like celebrating it, but also learning to manage it. Well, I love it. Well, hit, hit us with number one. Okay, number one, I'm glad you mentioned Clubhouse because this is what helped me get off of get off of Clubhouse this week or last week, I should say. And it's repeating this question to myself throughout the day. And it is this. Is this the best use of my time and talent right now in this moment? And if the answer is no, then I have to stop doing it. If the answer is um uh, I'm not sure, but who else is going to do it? Well, then you've got to hire someone else to do it. And ultimately, if the answer is no, this isn't, then you you just literally have to stop doing it. Even if other people have you convinced it's what you are supposed to do, we've got we've got to block out what everyone else is doing and just know, is this the best use of my time and talent for me right now? I do this by um, triggering myself whenever I start to, we all have this like the sense or this feeling that kind of starts to bubble up when we're like, guy, what am I doing? I'm spinning my wheels today. What am I supposed to be working on? Whenever I have that thought, I remind myself, okay ask yourself that question. It's a brilliant question. And I'm guilty of, of being stuck in a room on clubhouse, even on stage. <laughs> and for those that are maybe new to it, it's kind of a, a new app. It's invite only right now. And of course, when something's buzzing, it becomes a shiny object and shiny object syndrome can get you stuck and off task really quick. Is this the best use of my time and talents right now. And you have to know how to evaluate that question, right? So for some people, Clubhouse is perhaps the best use of their time and talent. But for me, it is absolutely 1000% in this moment, the stage of which Clubhouse is developed to, it is 1000% the wrong use of my time and talent. I can't make an impact there the way I can make an impact that I need to make. Like doing a podcast like this is far a far better use of my time and talent. So you have to evaluate it by knowing like what's my objective? What is it I'm trying to accomplish this year? What stage am I at in my business? Because if you just start jumping around to everybody else's stage and steps, you do everything out of order and your house of cards crumbles. You have to do the right things in the right order. Man, powerful. Hit us with number two. Number two is you need physical reminders to keep you on course. So we wake up every day and a lot of entrepreneurs, we we don't have the same structure that we had in school or the same structure that we, we might have working in corporate America where it's like, okay, the meeting's at 10 and then we have a Zoom call and then I've got to turn in my reports by this time. And that structure really works beautifully if we're easily distracted. That's why schools are you know set up on like a 45 minute bell system. But once we're entrepreneurs, now we're at the mercy of our own distractions. So you need a physical reminder of what you're supposed to be doing at that particular hour of the day. A physical reminder can be post, like post-it notes are great. Um, I use my day planner. I just keep it with me. And, and whenever I glance at it, I carry it in every single room. Like if I don't have my planner with me, I get that same kind of overwhelm, overwhelming sense of drowning that most people get when they don't have their phone with them. That's how I feel when I don't have my planner with me. So it's for most of us who are easily distracted, it needs to be something visual. So a post-it note, um, a, a, a planner, uh, a pad of paper, something that's a reminder for you to check in and say like, what, what am I supposed to be doing right now? So powerful. And I know for me, I use Google calendars um, and with like an Apple watch and, you know, we've, we're just talking about how phones can actually 
they can take you down a road. But the nice thing about a watch is that it doesn't, there's not a lot you can do on it. And I get the 30 minute notification with my day planned out. That's like, this is the thing you need to prepare for and the thing you need to do next. And I've learned that if what gets scheduled gets done, but if I just leave my day as an open block, I can get into trouble quick and get off task by not using my time in the best way. I'm glad you mentioned that leads me to point number three, which is for those of us who are very creative, we need a very set schedule, but our schedule is different than most people's schedule. Like, so for example, I have a, about a five minute video that is on my agenda to film today. And, uh, you know, one of my other team members assigned this to me and they, they put it on my calendar and gave me a 15 minute block of time to record this five minute video, which probably to them, they're like, oh, I gave her three times the amount of time she needs to film this. But I know myself personally, in order to get in that zone, because I'm easily distracted, I need to play, I need to do certain things to get myself in the right vibe and to feel creative and to, to really kill it. So I need about an hour thinking about that video before I film that video. And that might seem excessive, but if I don't do that, I won't be able to kill the video. I won't do a great job. I won't enjoy the process. And I'll get down on myself because I didn't do it fast enough or I didn't even do it that day because 15 minutes wasn't enough time. So it's using a schedule. Here's the tip. It's using a schedule that allows for the time you need to get in the zone and enough time to be creative. You know, that that's most people who don't create content don't understand that, that we all have our own process for getting in that zone. Such a brilliant tip, especially we um, recommend and talk about all the time when people are shooting their YouTube videos to batch produce content. I know you do the same. You'll batch produce course content, batch produce social media content. So you have all that focused intensity, shooting a bunch of videos at once. And oftentimes, and I'm guilty of it to this day, I underestimate the time it'll take to potentially ramp up, to get in the zone the time, like I get overconfident. I'm like, I'm going to shoot eight videos in two hours. Totally. And the next thing you know, it's, it's going into the evening. And I think that's also maybe just being more wise, a little more gracious. Of course we want to be effective and we don't want to over schedule, but I, I notice that we tend to under schedule the amount of block time necessary for creating content. Yeah. And, and you, we have to communicate that to our team. If you have a team, you have to communicate that to them so that they understand because we feel guilty about it like god you know i'm i should be able to bust this out they must think i'm a real slacker if i can't film a five minute video in 15 minutes but um it's more than that it's a process and getting into that zone is is your is your secret sauce no one else can do that no one else can create content that you're the star of nobody and there's a reason why so you've got to give yourself the parameters and the grace and the time to be able to do that and know that um, it's worth it. I'm excited for tip number four. Um, yeah. What does JOMO mean? <laughs> JOMO is the joy of missing out. And, um, you know, I think we all know what FOMO is. We all, you know, had that fear of missing out, which if to bring it back to any new social media app, right? Like, so when everyone started going crazy over TikTok, I'm like, I got to get everybody's talking about TikTok. I got to get on TikTok. Everyone starts talking about Clubhouse. I got to get on Clubhouse. You know, you, you have these things you feel like if I'm not doing it, everyone else in my industry is going to be doing it and I'm going to be left behind. But I've learned the only thing that I can control is, is me. And by managing my focus and doing less things, then I have time to do the things I know I need to do. So while there are things I want to do, I shouldn't even touch those things until I've completed the things I know I need to do. And we often, especially as creatives, we love to go do things that we we know we don't really need to do, but it feels like we're doing something. And so therefore we feel uh, productive or creative. But we also have to be aware that it's not what must be done. So you have to stop yourself and say, okay, what things am I doing right now daily and weekly that if I remove them, I would have more time to do the things I actually need to do. So that might be mindlessly scrolling on social media. As much as I want to look at everybody's social media, I don't. I, I only respond to my DMs and, and I post my content. Um, and so I have put on my do not do list. You literally, this is my fourth tip is you need a do not do list. And it can change all the time. But right now on my do not do list is do not go on Clubhouse. 
I might go on it a month from now, but right now it's on my do not do list. Also on my do not do list is don't just scroll through people's stories on Instagram. It's on my do not do list because I have so much I need to accomplish this month. You know, we're coming up on uh, opening up enrollment for Marketing Impact Academy. We've got a bunch of challenges that we're doing. And I've got to pour into my students before I just pour into my own mindless activities. So in writing, I've created a do not do list. And then like you see how I've bragged a couple of times about the fact that I'm not on Clubhouse. I've done that just because I'm trying to amp up my own like I'm reinforcing my own joy of missing out. That's such a powerful tip. And I think there's something about, you know, the power and the discipline it takes to not do things and the joy of missing out. And it reminds me in 2020, obviously the world came to a screeching halt, especially in, with the lockdown in March, 2020, I had found myself in a routine especially with my prominence in YouTube specifically and my network of friendships at like every event. And it built yeah. up over the years, years over years, I was going to Vid Summit and I'd be at VidCon and I'd be at Video Marketing World and I'd be at Social Media Marketing World. And they were all amazing. And like, they're all in the sense of all friends. I also like, you want to like, you know, with Michael Stelzner and Daryl, you like want to have the relationships. But when forced when things were forced off of my calendar, it was remarkable how much more effective Think Media became. Our mm -hmm. business actually grew at an exceptional level, not just because of maybe increased social media consumption and YouTube viewership, that's one piece. It grew because I was actually working on priorities because I was forced to. And this is so powerful, Shalene, because we are not necessarily, no one's actually, a pandemic's not finding its way into our ho house homes, hopefully, right. hanging over our shoulders and saying, don't go on Clubhouse right now. Don't get stuck on the Instagram feed. Do you even need to be on that social media platform right now? Why are you worried about, you know, one of my uh, life-changing programs I was a part of was the Marketing Impact Academy. I learned about lean magnets, learned about uh, freemiums. And sometimes when we were helping people that have joined and have been a part of that, they've they've talked about, here's the three freemiums I want to create. It's like, dude, you don't need to create three. You need to create one before you create a second one. <laughs> right. like, here's four course ideas I have. Here's three YouTube. We don't necessarily have somebody or an event or circumstance that clears our calendar. But my God, when you're forced into focus, mm -hmm. the level of productivity, it's not just like 10x. It can be like 100x, 1,000x yeah. when we actually see all these places, our time is leaking. Yeah. And as a, you're a perfect example, um, I, when, when, when we go to events, which is what you mentioned, you definitely feel like, well, you can convince yourself that it's the best use of your time. You can convince yourself like, yeah, no, this is great. I'm networking with the right people and getting my name out there, which is true. I need to do that. I need to do that. But is there something I need to do that moves, that really moves the needle in a more profound way? And the answer to that is, is yes. And for you, that was like your email list this year friggin' blew up, blew up. And as I always like to say, like I, I had a conversation recently with a friend of mine who was, um, well, to be honest, she was complaining about the fact that women aren't making as much money in, in this space as, as men are. And she's like, I'm sick of hearing about these guys having this seven figure launch and that seven figure launch. Like, why is it women can't make that kind of money? And I said, well, there are women that make that kind of money. And she said, well, I don't know. I don't, know what what i'm doing wrong i said well let's talk about how much time you devote to building your email list because those are your deepest most hardcore serious members of your community those are the people who aren't just like on your stories or watching your content weekly these are the people who are like raising their hand and saying like i, I want to know all the things and they're opening up your emails and so your income is so incredibly related not to your gender per se, but to your, the size of your email list. I, I just, I, I know that to be true because I've seen it from countless people who are really successful. And it's not about like working harder or who's working longer or who's got the hack. It's like who is discipline, has disciplined themselves to create a, a not do list and, and really figure out what is the most important thing for me to do to build my business off of social, like we're all in social trying to build our business, but it's the things we do off of social that really help us to crush. 
So smart. And, uh, you know, you are obviously on the context of this, we can't go into all the nuances, but you've helped me understand it's about building your business with the right steps in the right order. You're talking all about email list and, and definitely check out the show notes, think marketing podcasts for resources from, uh, Shaleen and some powerful things. If that's kind of a new concept to you. Um, but to your point, like you said, you might be on clubhouse in, in a month or in a month and a half sure. because the right things are out of the way and the right priorities. And again, I know we're kind of highlighting Clubhouse. It just happens to be the now thing at the time yeah, of sure. recording. But you even text me. You said, what do you think about it? And when, back when you text me, I was like, well, I'm not even on it yet. Maybe because I'm being an irresponsible content creator and entrepreneur, or maybe because I'm, I'm focused. Mm -hmm. And and you were like, amen. And you know, and I was going, we were going back and forth on that because again, I'm like, okay, this thing is really good. And I heard this quote that changed my life once. It was that good is the enemy of the great. Mm. That things can be really good. That's that's why it's a distraction. Going to the event is good, networking is good, but yet what's what really greatness for your business or greatness for that next step or reaching that plate of grace greatness a lot of good things can eliminate your time down having you miss out on that maximum great well i want to get to tip number five sure. what is number five so we can lock in focus kill distraction and be way more effective this year okay this one is you it's going to surprise you i think people are going to be weirded out to hear this but i think it will make sense to hear a business person <coughs> talk about how important this is. It's clutter, literally clutter. If you are easily distracted, which most people who are listening to this are easily distracted, that's a good thing and a bad thing. What it means for us is that we see little details that other people miss. Those little distractions allow us to see trends. They allow us to spot the difference that is made up in the details, but also it creates this like cloudiness in our brain when there's a lot of things around. It is why I find the very creative entrepreneurs, they can't work if they can, if their area is cluttered and messy. They can't work if uh, in the other room, they know there's a big pile of laundry. They can't work if there's just like messiness all around because their brain can't just ignore those details. It gets it gets clouded by those things. Each time you see something that's out of place, your brain actually has to make a decision. You might think that you've just ignored it, but you haven't. Your brain has said, I see that it doesn't belong there. I don't know why I still have that. And your brain made a decision. Okay. Don't do anything with it right now, but it still made a decision and that weighs our brains down. And it'll, it's harder for us to get into that zone and to do the things that we need to do. So my fifth tip is this, you need to get rid of all the freaking clutter. You need to declutter your house. You need to declutter your, most importantly, the area, the environment where you work. And I think one of the easiest ways for you know people to, to do this is to just pick an area that right now when I say this area is bringing down your mojo, what area do you think of? Like the first thing that came to mind, is it your closet? Is it your workspace? Is it the garage? Like whatever area like brought you down immediately, just focus on that area and don't think I'm going to finish it all uh, this weekend. Just pick one little corner of it and say, okay, I've got X amount of hours. Like I've got three hours on Saturday. How much of this garage can I tackle in three hours? Because you're not going to be able to do the whole thing and just decide and schedule it and know that that is going to make you money. It's going to make you money because it's going to give you clarity. It's going to help you to focus and you can sell that stuff. You know, it used to be like once a year, for the last, I don't know, 10 years, I've been doing a, a declutter challenge with my audience. And it's been great. People are like, it's life changing. I've been able to, I finally had the focus I needed to start my business or to focus on my email list or to uh, get that divorce. Like literally it holds people back clutter. And, and I've always been, you know, a big believer in like, you just got to donate it. Last year, I decided instead of telling people anything that they thought was nice enough to donate, I said, let's sell it. Let's declutter. It. Let's put that all that stuff in one corner and let's sell it. And I'll teach you how to sell it so that decluttering isn't just making you money because you've got more focus, but it's going to make you money because you can sell that stuff because the marketplace is on reselling stuff right now. It, it's one of the hottest ways for people to make extra money. That's awesome. And what's that called? We call it learner 
to earner, meaning, you know, there's so many of us that we, we take these courses, we listen to podcasts, we, we, we take in all the information, but then we never like apply it. And so this is a challenge where I force people like, okay, you're going to learn how to declutter and you're going to learn how to list these things the right way. So you can get maximum dollar with the least amount of a uh, hassle because a lot of people don't want to do this because they think it's a hassle, myself included. But literally last week, I made three thousand dollars on pot. It's not my business, but that's what I use. Anything that I once wore, I'm now selling it on Poshmark because that is the money that I donate to causes that are important to me, like uh, one in six or fighting Alzheimer's. Like these are really important organizations. And sure, if I donate those clothes, I can you know, give a small donation to them. But if I sell those clothes, like to be able to donate $3,000 to a cause of my choice is really powerful or to use that money to invest back into your business, to invest in training, to invest in a coach, to invest in the things that are going to take you to the next level. So declutter and then sell your clutter. That's amazing. And so learner to earner, that's right. I know uh, I saw it last year. You're doing it again. Of course, we'll link it up in the show notes and, uh, if you want to be a part of it, ask yourself, Think Marketing Podcast, do you need to declutter? If you do, that's probably the challenge for you. And I think a lot of us, I know myself included, it's so funny, the timing of this, Shaleen. You know, I just turned uh, 37, I think. And so we, uh, my wife, Sonia, and I have been married for 15 years and we've been collecting stuff. That's my point for 15 years. We're, we're hitting that, you know, on our way to 40 and we've been buying, you know, over the years, you collect stuff, yep. you move, yep. you collect, stuff shows up in your closet, doesn't quite fit right. It's nice. You only wore it once, but it doesn't actually fit right. You never wore it again. Tags are still on it. Um, you know, course, especially you're like, I don't even, I don't, I never, I haven't used that camera in five years. Why do I still have it? Why am I hanging on to this little device and that little device? And these are things that like, for you, they have no value, but it's okay. This is a wonderful example. One of the gals in our last, uh, learner to earner challenge had this like old rotary phone that her, uh, mom had given her. And she was like, just felt bad about throwing it away because she's like, you know, I just kind of brought back childhood memories. So she decided to list it on eBay and sold it within two hours for almost $400. She's going to throw it away. She wasn't even going to donate it because she's like, nobody is going to need a rotary phone. But so it's just crazy the things that we think have zero value that somebody else has been dying to find it. Man, that's super powerful. So number one, is this the best use of my time? Ask yourself that question throughout the day. Number two, physical reminders so that you could stay focused. Number three, schedule your time. What gets scheduled gets done. Number four, make a do not do list yeah. and crush or embrace the joy of missing out, the JOMO. And number five, declutter. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Sean Cannell, you are the man. Thanks for having me. Well, Shalene Johnson does it again. She brought you five ways that you can kill distraction. Now, Shalene has actually been a mentor of mine for over a decade. She brought me from being a young mother who was uh, in a depressive state. Really, I had postpartum depression. I was overweight. I was broke and disgusted in that way. Uh, my family and I were in debt. We were just trying to figure out how to make it online. And Shalene Johnson brought me from that woman to this woman today. And so I really recommend that if you know that your next step is to grow your online business, that you join the Marketing Impact Academy. She did mention that the doors are open and they are for a limited time. This is the marketing school that myself and Sean Cannell went to, to learn how to do all the things that helped us grow to multiple seven figures online. Now, you know us, we teach you YouTube and we're going to dive deep into how to do YouTube here on the podcast, as well as in all of our curriculum that we offer but Shalene Johnson goes really deep into knowing what your thing is and then growing that thing sustainably around the lifestyle that you want to choose. So if Marketing Impact Academy sounds like your next step, then definitely go to miabonus.com because we have some amazing bonuses for you for our way of saying thank you for joining the Marketing Impact Academy. We are giving you two hours of a mastermind with myself and Sean Cannell with a group of the MIA students that are a part of our community. So if you want to learn how you can get that two hour mastermind valued at over $5,000, as well as some of our additional courses that we're throwing in uh, for this offer, you can get all of the details at miabonus.com.
you know, I would not recommend something that I have not taken myself and have not seen the results. And I can tell you that from going from the, what should I do all the way into creating a multiple seven figure business, Shalene Johnson has been my mentor. Who's walked me through every single step of that process. And what's so cool is that when Sean and I met, that was one of those pieces where we're like, Oh my goodness, you know, Shalene, I know Shalene. And it was a, a helpful way of us learning how to drive this vision here at think media. So if that's your next step, miabonus.com is where you should go. Now you know that it is time to read the review of the day. If you are a part of our Think community and you've not rated and reviewed this podcast over on iTunes, I want to encourage you to do that this week. Now, if you're driving right now, obviously do it afterwards. But if you're walking your dog or doing your dishes or listening to this while you're working out, I am going to challenge you to grab your smartphone, go to iTunes, if that's where you're listening to this podcast on, and rate and review this podcast. It helps us to be able to get this content out to more people on the app that are interested in learning all about how to grow their YouTube channel and their online business using the power of YouTube. And today's review comes from Combat Yaoman. I hope I said that right. Uh, Combat Yaoman says, thanks, Think Team. Besides getting great tips and strategy, you help me keep my why front of mind. With just 36 subscribers and a small social following in five videos, I've connected with multiple real families who are getting value for my personal finance discussions. Your podcast keeps me focused on that, knowing with consistency that, uh, sorry, knowing Knowing with consistent, knowing with consistency, this will only grow in time. Much appreciated. Wow. Thank you so much. And I love how you said keeping your why in front of mind, because really this is challenging growing an online business, growing your YouTube channel. It is not for the faint of heart. This is a challenge. It's a grind, but it is well worth it when you know your reasons and you know your whys and you can stay out of distraction, right? Using those five tips that Shalene mentioned in this podcast, you're going to be able to reach your goals. And I am so excited for you. Thank you for leaving that uh, review. Now, in the next episode, you're going to want to stay locked and loaded because we have some more of our special guests here on the podcast. And then we're going to be jumping into some really great content this year. So make sure that you are subscribed wherever you consume the content from. If you're listening to this on YouTube, I recommend that you ring that bell so you get notified when the podcast goes live. And I want to thank you for being a part of our Think community, for leaning in, for taking notes, and for being action takers. If there's one thing that I love so much about this community, it's the messages that we get on social media and in email, all about how we have helped you grow your YouTube channel and your online business, and ultimately been able to go full-time. Those are our favorite stories. So if you have a story like that, make sure you send us an email or a DM so that we can uh, share that with our team and our community. Thank you so much for watching or listening and we'll catch you on the next episode.